Hello everyone. In today's session, we will start with another topic of the chapter Organisms and Population that is major abiotic factors which affect the organisms and population. We will start with the major abiotic factors. Right? Abiotic means non-living factors. Under that, we have temperature, light, soil and water. So, let's start with the first factor which is temperature. Let's start with the first factor. It is temperature. As I told you, among the major, among the abiotic factors, one of the most important ecologically relevant or important factor which affects the growth of organisms in population is temperature. That is why we are starting with this topic. So, temperature, it is most important or most relevant ecologically it is the most relevant ecologically important factor right uh, which affects the growth of organisms and population now how much temperature will be there on the plains how much temperature will be there at the mountains how much temperature will be there at the equator how much temperature will be there at the poles if we see like as we go from the equator to the upper side towards the poles temperature decreases in the same manner when we move from the plains to the hilly areas again the temperature decreases so temperature decreases when we move from plains to hilly areas similarly temperature decreases again when we move from equator to the poles right except for few organisms which are thermostable, which are thermotolerant. Remaining all other organisms will work under certain conditions which are called optimal conditions. So, except thermostable organisms, all remaining organisms work at a particular temperature which is called optimal temperature work at a particular temperature which is called <coughs> optimal temperature because temperature is very much important for the growth of the organisms we can tell that mango trees are not found in canada and germany or we can tell that snow leopards are not found in Kerala and Karnataka because the temperatures are not favorable. So, in the NCRT, they have given a statement that mango trees are not found in Canada and Germany. Why the temperature is not favorable there? Mango trees are not found in Canada and Germany. In the same manner, if you see snow leopard is not found in Kerala and Karnataka. Snow leopards are not found in Kerala and Karnataka because temperature is again not favorable there. And tuna fish is rarely caught beyond the tropical latitudes of the ocean because that temperature only they can grow. So, another example we can give is tuna fish is rarely caught beyond the tropical latitudes beyond the trap beyond the tropical latitudes of the ocean there only it can grow beyond that if you go you can't find the tuna fish so basing on this we can tell that how how much temperature is important and what will temperature do so temperature you know it alters the kinematics 
of enzymes all of us know that in our body all the reactions are mediated by enzymes and enzymes work at a particular range enzymes have a three dimensional structure now if the enzymes kinematics if the enzyme structure is altered by the temperature then activity will not be there so it if it alters the kinematics of the enzyme and it changes the bmr means basal metabolic rate it changes the bmr when it changes the bmr then it affects the function of an functioning of an organism and thus it affects the functioning of an organism thus temperature affects the functioning of organisms now we know that there are uh, the four main tropical zones there are four main zones tropical zone subtropical zone temperate zone and the arctic and antarctic zone now if you see the organisms which are going in tropical region what are they called on the basis of temperature so the organisms which are growing in tropical region are called as megathermals organisms which are growing in tropical regions since at the tropical region temperature is more we can call them they are called as megathermals more and the organisms which are going in subtropical regions they will be called mesothermals and the organism which are going in the temperate regions are called as microthermals organisms which are go growing in temperate regions are called as microthermals and the organisms which are growing in arctic and antarctic region are called hexothermals organisms which are growing in arctic and antarctic regions are called as hexothermals now in this way also we can call them or we can broadly classify the organisms into eurythermals or stenothermals instead of telling the organisms which growing in the tropical regions are called megathermals which are growing in subtropical regions are called mesothermals temperate regions are called microthermals arctic and antarctic regions are called hexothermals we can also broadly classify them into Uh, eurythermals and stenothermals we will see that classification also in ncert they mentioned about eurythermals and stenothermals so eury means those organisms can tolerate high range of temperatures whereas steno they can tolerate very narrow ranges of temperature then they are called as stenothermals most of the organisms are stenothermals only so when we see the broad classification we can classify the organisms into eurythermals and stenothermals so eurythermals can tolerate wide range of temperatures they can tolerate wide ranges of temperature examples for eurythermals are birds and mammals so the examples include birds and mammals coming to stenothermals i told these are the organisms which can tolerate very narrow range of temperature so majority are stenothermals only i told so stenothermals means they can tolerate very narrow ranges of temperature vast amount of means majority amount of organisms fall in this category most of the organisms fall under this category if you have to list down the examples if you take corals conifers or fishes or red algae they can tolerate very narrow range of temperature so they are called stenothermals so we can list down the examples of stenothermals as i told fishes corals 
conifers right uh, fishes corals conifers and then red algae also i told you are examples of stenodermal so these are the examples of stenodermal now there are certain rules which are related to the temperature like glogger's rule is there bergman's rule is there ellen's rule is there renchi's rule is there and jordan's rule is there let us list down one by one because many times in the neat examinations so this has been asked the rules related to temperature has been asked let us see that now one by one we will see we are classifying the uh, organisms we told megadermals mesodermals microdermals hexosodermals then a broad range we told eurydermals and sterodermals now when we are talking about the rules which are related to temperature i told the first rule the first rule is called as glogger's rule now what does the glogger rule states glogger rule states that the organisms the warm blooded organisms the warm blooded animals which are in the polar regions they have less pigmentation when compared to the same warm blooded animals in the uh, tropical or temperate regions so if you see polar bear it will be very fair in color right so glogger's rule states that the warm blooded animals in polar regions the warm blooded animals in polar regions have less pigmentation means they are fair than the organisms at tropical or temperate regions so this is what glogger's rule tell you can remember glogger rule is related to glamour rule they are talking about the skin color pigmentation now the next one is bergman's rule now what is bergman's rule it talks about the body surface so berg according to bergman's rule bergman's rule states that the warm blooded animals which are in the cold regions they have large body when compared to those animals which are in the tropical or temperate regions so bergman's rule it states that the warm blooded animals in the polar regions have more or big body large body when compared to the organisms at tropical or temperate regions so when glogger's rule is talking about pigmentation bergman's rule is talking about the body surface area then coming to the third rule which is called ellen's rule now i told you the first step is we have to read the scientist information before starting every unit the same manner we started organisms and population we we read about the rd uh, mishra and then we came to the chapter the second step is like usually we buy ncert textbooks but we don't buy ncert exemplar book i told ncert exemplar is very very important because from ncert exemplar straight ahead questions will be picked and will be kept in the neat examination let it be physics or chemistry or biology so now i'm listing out all the ncert exemplar mcqs so this ellen rule this question this mcq on ellen's rule is there in ncert exemplar and you know this question has been asked in the neat 2015 question paper also now what is ellen's rule then ellen's rule talks about the extremities now the sheep and all which are in polar regions will have shorter ears and shorter legs and all so that is ellen's rule so ellen's rule states that the warm blooded animals
in polar regions he tells they have short extremities like ears and legs when compared to the animals at tropical or temperate regions so this is a lens rule now fourth rule when we see it is about renchi's rule let us see that now what is renchi's rule then now renchi's rule it talks about the wing size of the bird so they will tell in polar regions the birds have narrow wings and acclimatate wings when compared to the birds of the tropical and temperate regions which have bigger wings so renchi's rule says that in colder regions birds have narrow and acclimate wings when compared to the birds of tropical regions so this is the fourth rule and the last rule is called jordan's rule now let us see what is jordan's rule jordan's rule talks about the size again with the vertebrae he tells that the fishes which are in the colder areas are big in size and they even have large number of vertebrae so jordan's rule tells that it states that fishes in colder areas have large size and even large number of vertebrae when compared to the fishes of the warmer regions so these are the four rules where we talk about the temperature so tem temperature zones glogus rule it states that uh, the warm blooded animals will have less pigmentation the warm blooded animals in the polar regions will have less pigmentation than the organisms in the tropical region bergman's rule talks about the size the organisms which are in the polar regions are huge when compared to the organisms or the animals at the tropical or temperate regions ellen's rules talk about the extremities he will tell that uh, the extremities are short in the polar regions now wrench's rule talks about the wing size he tells that the birds which are in the colder regions will have short wings and narrow wings and jordan's rule talks about the size of the fish and the number of vertebrae he tells that the fish which are in the colder regions will have large size and they have large number of vertebrae also so we have seen the rules also so the next content which is related to temperature is we can classify them into whether they can regulate their body temperature or whether they are unable to regulate their body temperature on that basis we can call them as ectodermals and endodermals let us see that topic also and we will see the examples too it's like on the basis of whether they are able to tall whether they are able to control their body temperature or they are not we can classify the organisms into ectothermals endothermals we can also call them as cold blooded animals and warm blooded animals we can also call them as poikiodermal we can also call them as homeodermals now what do you mean by ectodermals and endodermals ectodermals so they cannot regulate their body temperature they cannot regulate their body 
temperature. Whereas, if you go with endothermals, they can control their body temperature. Let whatever is the external temperature, they have uniform temperature of the body. So, they can regulate their body temperature. Now, the examples for endothermals, if we have to see birds and mammals. The examples for ectodermals, if we have to see, so fishes, invertebrates, then we can go with amphibians also, they can't tolerate a changes fluctuations and reptiles also and ectodermals are less active when compared to endodermals, they are less active. And these are more active. They are, they are less active in nature and these are more active in nature. Since they are unable to control or maintain their body temperature, in severe winter, they go for hibernation. So, hibernation is called as winter sleep. So, to avoid severe winter, peak winter, they go for hibernation. And to avoid summer, Severe summer, they go for summer sleep, which is called as estivation. Now, two times in the neat previous papers, what is estivation? They have been asked. So, two times in the neat examinations, what is estivation? They have asked. Estivation means it is summer sleep, hibernation means it is winter sleep. So, all this information is about temperature, what we have seen. We told among the four abiotic factors, temperature is the most ecologically relevant uh, factor, we told. And temperature, it affects the enzyme kinematics, thus it alters the BMR, it changes the BMR, it affects the enzymatic activity of an organism, we discussed. And then we started categorizing the organisms in broad way, we classified into eurythermals and stenothermals. So, zone-wise, we have class classified them into megathermals, microthermals thermals, mesothermals and hexothermals. Then we classified the organisms into this one like cold bladder and warm bladder and we have seen five rules also which are related to temperature. In our next class, we will talk about the next factor, abiotic factor which is water and the third factor light. If you like the information, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.